Scott here from the Centre for Excellence's Modelling Systems team. Today I'm going back to the debugger. So today we're going to in investigate something called core dumps, which is where you can save the state of your program when it crashes. So if you've got something like a long ru running simulation where it just keeps ticking along and it's crashing so somewhere like an hour into the simulation, you can uh, save the complete state of the program and then go back to it in the debugger. So I'm here in my total view folder. So again I've um, updated Git my GitHub thing and now I've got a program called Core Dump. So if I run this, what do we see? So you can see there it took a bit of time and then it crashed with an error saying floating divide by zero. Um, so our first step, again, we've got the traceback because I compiled it with um, the dash traceback flag. Uh, we've got in the routine main in core dump f90 at line 31, we've got an error. So let's go in there. and go to line 31. As you can see it's just a small program. It runs a loop for a lot of things and then it divides a set of value. It divides one by some values. So you can see here values is an array of real numbers. So somewhere in our program one of these values has got to zero. Um, so I've obviously engineered that so this program so that would happen. Uh, but in the real world, um, you wanting to track things like this down. Um, so, um, how do I work out where this value came from that crashed? So what I'm going to do now is quit this, and I'm going to set a variable in the environment to en enable core, du core dumps. So if I run ulimit, dash c unlimited. Now we've got core dumps enabled. So this is a bash command. If you're using C shell, it's going to be limit core dump size unlimited. So now when I run my program, so I'll just show you the contents of the directory. I'm going to run core dump now we have this file core.value so that's the core dump of the process so what that means is all of the processes memory um, all of the registers the current line that the program's on that's all stored in this um, file here to have a look to have a look at it we'll want to go to total view so module load total view to start it up and total view. Now we want to debug our core dump program and we want to load it in the state it was when it's crashed. So we're going to add in core.value1.numbers. So this is going to start up. And as always, total view takes a little bit of time to start up. It shouldn't be too long. So this will load us in the state that the program was at when it crashed and will allow us to look at all of the program's variables and see exactly what was happening. Okay, so here we are. We've got our current state. So you can see it's not like when we were running TotalView before where it would start out with a blank spa state and with the go button here. Here we've got no go button. We've just put straight into where it was when it crashed we didn't have to run anything. So if we can go back to our code file here with the F90, we can see that it crashed when it was dividing one by some number. So we can have a look at the values here. So we can see A values is a real array in the tooltip. And if we double click on that value, we can see there we go. So TotalView lets you look at the contents of arrays. 
So we, here we have the contents of the A values or array. And you can see that element 1, oops, so element 1 has gotten to 0, whereas the rest of the elements are all small numbers, but they're still um, positive, positive values. And as we all know, 1 divided by 0 is not really defined in the real number sequence. So that's what caused the program to crash. And we can go back through here. So if we had a lot of calculations, we could trace it back. So we could go A values was A values divided by I. What's the value of I at this point? I has been optimized out of the program, so we can't look at that. You can see here. So when you see stuff like this bad address thing, it just means things have been optimized out. That if there was a big sequence of calculations, you could trace your way back through them. So trace your way back through the arrays, double clicking on them one at a time, and seeing what the value in the first entry was, until you found a suspect thing. So something that really stands out from the other ones. So that's the basics of core dump debugging. So you just run total view with the core dump file. Yes, we do really want to exit. Um, so I'll just go to the show the command options I did for that. Uh, one thing I've added here is dash fpe equals zero. What this does is it enables floating point exceptions. So if you're encountering um, not a numbers in your simulation, one thing you can do is add this to your compiler flags and that will make the model crash whenever it encounters not a number values. So that makes it a bit easier to trace where they're coming from. As you can get the core dump, you can load it up in total view, and you can work your way through all the arrays to see exactly what uh, values are an issue. Okay, so that's been an introduction to core dumps. Remember it was ulimit-c unlimited in bash and in c shell uh, limit core dump size unlimited you just go back up here so what you want to enter is this bit thanks for watching and i'll see you next time